Project one, replicating the Google homepage, or rather replicating the replica of the Google homepage. So here we are in codifyacademy.com forward slash Google. This is our Google replica, non-working as of yet. They have not given us access to their database. So the first step we're gonna do is, before we inspect elements, look at the source code, we're going to put the files together. So I have created this folder called Google. Just right click, create new folder. Drag it right into Sublime Text 3. Here we go. Now what we're gonna do is, the folder's completely empty. So we're gonna right click and choose new file. And we're gonna save it as index.html. All right, so we have our first file there. We're gonna click on Google again and choose new folder. And at the very bottom here, you're gonna write in CSS and just press return or enter. And we get our CSS folder. We'll create another folder. We'll call it IMG. Press enter and it creates our new folder. Right click on CSS because we're gonna create our main.css file. Now when you right click and create it right from there, you'll notice we're already in the CSS folder, which is why we do it like that. It just makes things just that much faster. All right, so we have everything in there. So let's just quickly go ahead and put in all of the standard tags that we need. Body tag, closing body tag, closing HTML tag. All right, I'm gonna just add some spaces here for this. All right, great. So now we have our basic structure down. So let's go back to our page. The first thing we're gonna do is, instead of inspecting the element, we're gonna click on view page source. So here we have all of our HTML, right? We have everything in our head tag, everything in our body tag. What we're gonna do is actually go one by one. When you're learning web development, you want to go element by element to make sure that you're fully understanding what that element does. So let's just start at the very top. So we have HTML lang equals English, language is English, link rel shortcut icon, href equals favicon.io. So we would just copy this, go to Google, enter it in, and here we have some links describing what this is. And it is a favicon. What is favicon.ico? So this one pops up right here. How to create a favicon, it gives you details. Favicon is essentially this image right here. So for us, for Codify Academy, we have this. On our Google replica, we use the Google favicon, which is right here. So let's go back to this code. So let's move on to the next tag. So we have a meta tag, char set equals UTF-8. You do the same thing. You can just copy and paste this right into Google and find out, well, exactly what does this do? All right, perfect. So W3 schools, they have really good information. The char set attribute specifies the character encoding for the HTML document. Sounds like a whole bunch of gibberish. You really don't have to worry too much about this. I would just recommend that you include it in there. Do some more reading if you want to see exactly what it does. Um, but these are one of the many things you don't really need to fully understand, like what are the difference in character sets and things like that. If you use UTS-8, you're gonna be fine. So just put that in there and include it in all of your code going forward. And what you would do is actually go one by one here too. So I'm just gonna shrink this. And we would just go one by one. We can do line equals en. Then inside the head, we would do link rel equals shortcut icon, href equals favicon.ico, close it. And we would just go one by one and include all of this in our code. That's exactly how you want to add in the HTML and CSS. What you don't want to do is just grab all of this and copy it. Technically, this is working and it will match exactly. We don't have the CSS in, but you haven't really learned anything. So you wanna make sure that you go step by step when you're doing it. For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go step by step to explain every one of these. I actually want you guys to go in and see if you can find out what is a UL tag? What does an LI tag do? How does this setup actually work? So now we need to get the CSS and we can do that by coming back to our Google page. 
This time we are going to inspect the element and choose sources. All right, so sources links directly to our files. So we actually have access to our main.css file right here. And this is all of our CSS. Again, if I just copied this entire thing and pasted it in, it technically would work. The problem is I wouldn't have learned anything. So what you want to do is you want to go line by line starting at the top and see exactly what everything does. And if you don't know what it does, Google it. So we have our selectors here. Asterisk means everything, so it wants everything to have a natural font size of 18 pixels. Body is connected to the body tag. A is connected to every A tag. A hovers every time you hover over an A tag, you want these rules to apply. So you can just go one by one and see exactly what it does. So instead of, again, just copying and pasting it in, you just want to come to your code, font size 18px. And then you can just go body and then just enter it in one by one and check your code and see what it does. Now, if there isn't any apparent change, definitely Google this. Just come here and type in background w3 schools CSS and it pops up right away. Then we have all this information on background and how it works. You're going to be doing that a lot going forward. I mean, for six months, for a year, for, for several years, you're going to be going about doing it. Whether it's jQuery or JavaScript, you're going to have to go in and say, hey, what exactly does this do? So you're going to have to get used to doing this style. Now, for the sake of making sure this video doesn't last for hours, I'm going to go in and I'm going to copy all of this as if I actually typed it all in by hand and save it. All right, so I have both of these saved and I'll come back here open up the index page and it's all working except we have two broken images here all right so the last thing we need to do is actually retrieve these images the way we're going to do that is we're going to come here we're going to right click on each image individually inspect elements in the html we're going to double click here the img tag and we're just going to paste it right here so this is a path that is going to lead us to that image. Open it up, there it is. So we'll do save image as, and we'll keep the name google.png, and this time we're gonna to go to desktop, and Google, and inside of the IMG folder, and save it there. We'll go back, and we'll do the same thing for our image. Although really, you should be putting in your own image, just so it looks like your own replica, and not just Chris's save the image as here, save it there, and we'll go back, we'll go to our style sheet, and there we go. Okay, so here we go at our index page, and everything is looking good. All right, the last image we need is the favicon, so let's go back to our Google replica page here, inspect the element, drop down the head tags, double click on favicon, add it at the end of our path here, this one is not going to take us to another page. It's just going to download right away. So we have it right there. Open up our Google page. Drag it in. Delete this three at the end of favicon. All right, and then we're good to go. We can go back to the page, refresh. All right, and that's how easy it is. So just go step by step. Make sure that you're not just copying and pasting the code, but you're actually writing it out by hand and fully understanding every single part of it. You don't just want to gloss over it and just say, hey, look, I completed it, because completing is not the goal. Understanding is the goal, and getting used to coding these different tags and elements and the CSS rules together is the goal. So make sure you go ahead and practice that as much as possible.